Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the K600 TV keyboard from Logitech. This is designed to work in your living room and you can control your television along with two other devices. Once you have the devices paired up, you can switch very quickly between them uh, with these keys here at the top. And we're going to demo all of that and show you what does and does not work with this keyboard in just a minute. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this keyboard is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is not a small remote control. This is a full-size keyboard and trackpad, so it will take up a little bit more room on your coffee table. It'll certainly be a lot larger than some of the other tiny devices we've looked at that are more like remote controls, but if you are using your computer on your television, for example, it's a lot easier to navigate with this than it might be with something like this. So there's certainly uh, some value to this. Now the cost on this, though, is a bit steep. This is $70. Uh, compared to 20 bucks for another Logitech device that's very similar. This is their K400 Plus. It's not a spectacular device, but it's certainly functional and does most of what this one does. But the big difference between the $20 device here and the $70 device uh, that we're reviewing today is that you can connect up to three devices uh, either with Bluetooth or it's included a uh, unifying connection dongle. Uh, that dongle is stored here in the back of the battery compartment. You can just pop it out and plug it into your TV or computer or whatever to get going with it uh, without having to pair up Bluetooth. The only issue I found with the dongle uh, in this experience is that it is tied initially to position one here. And if you end up setting up position one as Bluetooth, uh, that dongle becomes an orphan until you load up driver software on the computer and reconfigure it. So they weren't really clear about that. Uh, so just be advised that if you want to use the dongle, uh, do not pair anything with position one here on the keyboard because that will disable the dongle. Now the trackpad on this one is a click pad. So it will work very similar to how the trackpads work on modern laptops. So if I want to initiate a click, I can just push in the click pad here. It's got a nice little click to it. So you get a nice amount of tactile feedback. If you want to do a right click, you can uh, just uh, push two fingers down on the pad and it will detect that. You can also do two fingers scrolling here as well. Uh, one thing that I noticed though is that pinch to zoom will work on Windows uh, but not on the Mac. So there might be some gestures that uh, don't initiate themselves on the Mac side, but they do on uh, Windows, as you can see here. I did find that the trackpad is not as accurate as what came with my laptop, but if I was sitting across the room in, on the couch or something, it's adequate enough, but I'm not uh, all that crazy about this trackpad, especially compared to the prior version, which I felt was a little bit more accurate, at least on some of the older Logitech keyboards. Uh, clicking and dragging can be a little bit of a drag sometimes. You can, of course, just push it down here and drag windows around. Uh, but if you want more pre precision, what you can do is uh, click on the mouse button button on the left-hand side of the keyboard here and then uh, move the mouse without having to push it down. So there's a couple different ways to operate the mouse here. They also have a right mouse button button uh, here as well. So if you have a hard time with the gestures, you can uh, get buttons to replicate those gestures for you. And on the computer software, you can actually configure how some of these keys will work, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Now, compatibility with your smart TV might be a hit or miss thing. Uh, they do have a list of what they're officially supporting, and they are recent models of Samsung, LG, Sony, and Philips televisions. And you'll want to go onto this compatibility website first before purchasing to make sure that your TV uh, will have some support with it. Uh, I think also if you've got an Amazon Fire TV, an actual TV with the Amazon operating system, it should work with that as well. But again, the only ones they're officially supporting are the ones that uh, you'll find on their Smart TV compatibility guide. And I thought the Smart TV setup was a bit clunky because they take you to this website and what they want you to do is actually load the website up on your television and have the site detect what TV you're running. And the reason is, is that you have to program the keyboard uh, to configure the keys that are on the left-hand side here so that your home and back and uh, other buttons work as you would expect them to work. But what I would suggest you do is just go to the website that they give you on your computer and then you can browse and manually select the TV that you're trying to connect with. And what will happen here, for example, if I select LG WebOS is it'll ask me to hold down function and five 
on my keyboard and that will configure everything to work with that television and then it's very easy to uh, change it to something else later if you change your mind and these settings will be tied to whatever position you are in so if I'm in position three and did that keyboard combo that would assign the key layout to position three here so this thing can get a little complicated actually for something that's supposed to make life easy for you but there's uh, just so many different TVs no standard as to how keyboards and trackpads should work with them and there's another problem not all apps behave the same either let's take a look at that so here we are on my Samsung television and as you can see here the Netflix app is allowing me to type out things and search for stuff which might be a little bit easier than having to use the remote control to do it uh, and as my focus gets uh, back in place here uh, you can see that the trackpad though is not registering at all here but I can use the home button here to switch apps the uh, arrow keys here work on the uh, keyboard so I can use those to navigate around I can push the center button here to initiate YouTube now what's funny about the YouTube app on Samsung is that I do get uh, a mouse cursor that I can use with the trackpad that's not available anywhere else on my Samsung television but if I go to search the keyboard doesn't work and this is just an app specific kind of issue right now so on uh, the Samsung smart TV at least you can't use the keyboard to search for stuff but you can use the mouse uh, Netflix will let you use the keyboard but not the mouse so there's a lot of different things that these apps might bring and what each app will bring you will differ based on what TV that you have uh, so luckily uh, Logitech has put together a list of uh, apps and what they can do on their website which you might want to peruse first but there's a good chance that the app that you use most often on your smart TV will not work with the keyboard at all at least until it gets updated and as you know with smart TVs they don't often update their apps that frequently especially as the TVs get older but I did find that many set top boxes like my Nvidia Shield TV here running Android uh, do work just fine because Android TV is designed to work with a uh, mouse and keyboard so that stuff worked okay uh, most of these buttons here seem to function as you would expect them to and uh, overall it was a good experience with the set top boxes uh, but not so much with the smart televisions again you'll need to check compatibility with the devices that you're looking to run with but generally uh, Android TV boxes work fine uh, that would be the Mi Box for example in the Nvidia Shield TV uh, Amazon Fire TV boxes also including those little sticks should work well too because those are also running Android and have very good keyboard and trackpad compatibility and switching between devices works very well on here so we have my Mac here uh, program to position one and if I want to switch over to my Surface Go tablet now I can push down the two and that will uh, pair up pretty quickly there and then I can switch back to the Mac here uh, just as fast so it's a pretty nice seamless maneuver to go back and forth between these devices I also have my TV right now on position three so when we uh, initiate that uh, the TV should be able to uh, get controlled once again and I can uh, move around that way and the TV is using the dongle currently uh, which I configured with the computer software so let's take a look at that so this is the Logitech options software that runs on the Mac and Windows and you can configure a couple of the keys that uh, you see here that are highlighted so for example if I don't want this to be a right click I can click on that and make it do something else and there's a few things here that you can configure it to do so it's not quite like a gaming keyboard that gives you a lot of different options but there are uh, some ways to reconfigure how it might interact with your computer if you have an orphan dongle uh, you can reattach it to the keyboard here by using the add device feature uh, and plugging that dongle into the computer but again if it's orphaned and you don't have the computer software running you won't be able to do much with that dongle until you do get it connected up with a PC now you also have the ability to change how the trackpad behaves so you can uh, change scroll direction for example if you don't like how tap to click is working you can uh, disable that completely uh, that's something I do just because I don't like tap to click I like to push the button down uh, so you have that option there you can also decide to turn off the zooming feature too so a couple of things you can do with the trackpad here uh, again though you can't do any of this configuration unless you actually take the time to load up the software and configure it so just be aware of that and then on the easy switch here you can see what uh, is assigned to each position now you'll see here that both positions two and three are assigned to my Windows 10 computer and that is because when the dongle got orphaned I repaired it using my PC and it doesn't seem to update itself when you plug that dongle into something else so there's just a lot of little uh, compatibility things that you're going to run into on this and I think they could have provided better documentation to give you some idea as to 
how all of this stuff works because it does have two connectivity methods, the dongle or Bluetooth, and there are ways to completely disable the dongle inadvertently uh, that would have been nice to have a little bit more documentation on. And a great example of this documentation issue you'll find on the initial configuration page that we looked at before. If you click on the help icon here, you've got a lot of questions I think that people might have when they're trying to get this thing set up. And if you click on any one of these links, it doesn't actually take you to the answer right now. It brings you back to the homepage of uh, Logitech's website. And that certainly isn't going to be a very nice consumer onboarding experience. So I spent a lot of time just trying to figure out all the little nuances of this thing. If you just plug in the dongle into your television and being done with it, that'll probably work fine. But if you do try to dive a little bit deeper into multiple devices and looking at some of the compatibility issues that you might run into, there's just not a lot there to help you through this process. And that to me was uh, one of the biggest issues. Now, all those things though are correctable uh, through either software updates on the smart TVs or on their website, for example. The big omission on this product, and this might be kind of a buried lead, is that there's no backlight on the keyboard. And that really is a killer for me. Now, Logitech does have a backlit keyboard called the K830. Uh, which is designed for home theater environments. And I thought that given that they uh, have been in this space before, that this keyboard, which again is designed to be in your living room, would also have a backlight, but it does not. So just bear that in mind. But overall, I do like it quite a bit. I always really have been fond of Logitech's keyboard trackpad combos over the years. We use them uh, here in the studio. I own probably three or four of these things at this point. Uh, so they're very good. This one is just as good as the others. It's a little bit different in how it works, but I do like the fact that you have uh, the ability to very quickly switch between devices uh, using these positions up here at the top. Uh, the trackpad isn't terrific, but it's functional, and I think it'll work well as a living room device. Uh, the battery-powered devices here, the ones that are not rechargeable, last a really long time. In fact, I've been using this keyboard probably for two and a half or three years, and I don't think I've ever had to change the batteries on it. So I don't think this will be something that dies on you frequently. It'll probably last as long as your TV remote control batteries typically do. And again, they're just triple A's here that go in on the bottom. So not bad. It does have some issues, again, just with overall compatibility on the part of the smart TV makers. Hopefully we'll see some standardization uh, in support for keyboards and trackpads moving forward, which will make this better in the future. Uh, but for now, just go on their website, look at not only the smart TV compatibility, but the app compatibility to make sure it's going to do everything you need it to do. Uh, but you will have a very good experience if you are planning to pair it up with your phone or tablet or laptop computers. So that'll do it for the Logitech K600 TV keyboard. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.